Hi, everybody. I'm Morgan McCoy, and I'm so excited to be here with you today to chat about pivoting my business from career coaching to an embedded employee advocacy offering within businesses. So I am the force behind Brag and Write. Uh, I'm the owner and chief career coach, and I have a background in HR tech and professional document design. With these resources, I was in three years of product management at a pay structure software company where I learned how pay works and an employee's place within that structure and how to negotiate for more money for yourself. I now take all of that knowledge and help my clients in their job search by surfacing as the most qualified candidate, crushing that interview loop, and then negotiating for more money than they've ever made. Now, oh, I went too fast. Just kidding, sorry, I haven't used this clicker before. I've got a question for you guys. How many of you have ever had a toxic boss? Show me a raise of hand. Okay, that's like every single person in the room, which is actually more than what the studies show. So McKinsey and Company recently reached, released a report where they showed that 56% of Americans say that their boss was mildly or highly toxic. Now let that sink in because 75% of Americans say that their boss is the most stressful part of their workday. Now that stress has cost. Costs in loss of productivity, costs in absenteeism, and healthcare related costs. Now, you guys, we're going to be interactive here. Shout me out a number. How much money do you think businesses you lose annually, collectively, when it comes to stress? 20,000. 2 billion. Overall, ever, what is the total cost of stress? You're all wrong. It's $300 billion. Uh, US businesses lose up to $300 billion annually due to workplace stress. But this isn't the only number that's keeping me up at night because what we know based on workplace stress and the cost of stress is that our career model, our management model is broken. The, the single person that we expect employees to have delicate conversations around pay and career progression is the same person that is stressing them out the most at work. So how do we expect them to have these conversations? And how do we expect them to progress? Well, when we, it comes to progression, we are in a new age here. As we enter into the fourth industrial revolution, we are going to be losing 85 million jobs. Think about your cashiers, your tellers, soon your drivers. These early career and uh, entry level jobs, minimum wage jobs, are the jobs that are going to be disappearing and displaced by tech. Now, we're going to be gaining about 97 million jobs, but these will be highly skilled, highly technical jobs that work hand in hand with tools like AI. But how do those people that are losing jobs get those 97 million jobs that are going to come. And the fact is, there's no training available to them. They're entirely on their own, but they're not the only ones. About 50% of all workers will have to be reskilled in the next five years to prepare them for this technological revolution. So 50% of you in this room should be ready already looking to learn ChatGPT, looking to learn those new skills so that you can remain employable in the workforce. But when you're ready to go learn those skills, where are you going to go? It's certainly not your employer because only about 10% of all skills training comes from employers. Employees are largely left on their own. The company says, here's $500 in an education stipend, go find your own training. So employees are left to online courses and uh, certifications to learn those skills themselves. Now, problem because employees are already stressed out of their mind, it's costing businesses money, and this isn't a solution for businesses that want to remain profitable into this next technological revolution. And this brings me to two problems that are keeping me up at night. Workers are stressed, they're depressed, and they're rudderless. In a market where churn has become the norm and the expectation is to get four years of work out of you in two, the, these are, all of these things cost the business in knowledge loss and productivity. Additionally, upskilling is desired by workers and it's going to be required moving forward, especially for progression, but businesses aren't equipped to train them. 
And this is why Bragg and Wright is proposing an offer that has three prongs. The first is employee advocacy, the second empathy training, and the third skills enablement. When it comes to employee advocacy, Bragg and Wright would work one-on-one -on -one with individuals or small groups to provide plans for per professional growth and discuss and track performance. This is a major time suck for managers right now. And as we know, they're not doing it effectively. The next step, empathy training. Black and White would provide anti-bias and anti-bullying training directly to leaders and managers so that our workplaces can become a little less toxic. And we can remember that even though we're working closely with AI, we're all still humans with feelings. And frankly, it, that has been forgotten in the workplace. The last element here is skills enablement. Because Rag and Wright is already working one on one with employees to learn about what their career progression looks like, we can work with them either in house to provide basic level uh, kind of like trainings on these new skills. Think Meet ChatGPT, your new intern, or we can work with, the, work with individuals and small groups to provide advanced external training, working with other organizations who are already providing these trainings and sourcing them directly to businesses. Employers benefit here because they're going to save money in healthcare costs, in knowledge retention, and in hiring and training. And employees benefit because they're happier, they're healthier, and they're going to stay on longer because they know that they're being invested in. Now, why is Bragg and Wright ready to provide these services? Because we're already doing it. But I'm already working with clients to provide career planning and skills identification and coaching one-on-one -on -one and with small groups. And we're also providing trainings and workshops from a train the trainer perspective to make sure that in individuals who are empowering employees are ready to do that with all of the modern tools in hand. If you actually want to book a free career consultation with me or talk to me a little bit about my presentation here today, you can pull out your phone and take a picture of this QR code and we can talk more about your career. Now, this brings me to my ask of all of you here today. I want feedback. Do you think that to be profitable, businesses must have a churn and burn mentality? Should career passing be on the employee entirely or should businesses expect to play a role beyond that, that education stipend? And finally, do you know of any businesses who are willing to invest in retaining and growing their employees? Now, this, uh, no, wrong way, so wrong way. That concludes my conversation today. Um, I'm now going to take questions, but I just want to say I see lots of familiar faces here today, and Bragg and Wright wouldn't be possible without all of you. So thank you so much, um, and I'll take questions. Yeah. You did an awesome work. How many people are here? It's just me. I do have a volunteer who helps me out, um, but I started this business in January and it's just been me, but um, I like to think that Bragg and Wright is all of us because it is for all employees. Other questions? Yeah, Lee. Yeah, so um, presentation, by the way, it was very well thought out. I like how you structured the problem and then gave a scope start and gave a solution for it. My question is, you know, there's a lot of different industries here and, you know, unionized industries and non unionized What kind of industry do you see yourself going into first or that's worked in the past to help get feedback on your questions? And could you back the one slide to see what your questions were? Yeah. Um, so let me make sure I understand your question. Um, what industry do I expect industry to start? Industry-wise, types of businesses that okay. work well. So yeah. for you. So because I'm in Seattle, tech is, obvious, is kind of like the first spot, but... I'm honestly working with individuals in logistics, in healthcare. The resources that I teach about how to surface as the most qualified candidate, you know, every, every recruiting process is very similar. They're just looking for different skills. And a skill that I bring to the table as a coach is how to translate your skills into what the hiring manager is going to expect. And so I see this information really crossing industries, but ex expect to start in tech. Got it. And can I do one more? I'll, I'll come back. Oh. Ingrid? Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so in the past, I, in a previous role, I worked in a very toxic environment and I really didn't have any power to like 
bring in this type of service? Is there any way that, you know, as in this former role where I referred to myself as a grunt worker, do you have like tools or resources to help bring in this type of resource from like from someone in my past experience where I didn't have control? Are you saying like bringing into the business specifically or bringing into your life as an employee? Either. Either. Okay. So this is where I talk about workplace resilience, because what we know is that the average American has 12 jobs in their lifetime and that job la and each one of those jobs is going to last them about 3.5 years. And so the idea of a dream job is dead. There is no dream job. There is only the next job that's going to net you about 10% higher than if you stay on at your current company, which is going to net you about 2%. So what you need to do is have an opportunistic mindset about work because work certainly has an opportunistic mindset about you. And that's where I work with my clients to decide to discover is staying in the same place, the right path for you. Is there something that's overwhelmingly stressing you that means you need to leave or is there opportunity for progression where you're at? Does that answer your question, Ingrid? Awesome. Uh, where are we going? Over here? Hi there. Hi. So I was just wondering what your pricing model looks like when you're uh, dealing with a new client, say somebody who, you know, is just sort of entering the workplace or is one or two jobs in and doesn't have a ton of money to, you know, hire you as a coach. What does that look like for somebody who's newer to the business? Yeah, absolutely. So my pricing model for coaching, which includes six sessions, is $1,050. And that can be split over either three months or kind of prorated however far out people need it to go. Uh, I'm very interested in working with individuals really across pay spectrum, and I don't want that to be a barrier. I can always work one-on-one -on -one with clients if they just want to focus on one single aspect of the services that I offer, then I'll do a one-on-one, -on -one just like a one-off session for, a, for about $150. And then that 20 minute career consultation in which we can actually uncover a lot uh, is always free. In the back? I don't think you answered her question at all. Oh. She, didn't, she didn't have the agency within her oh, agency. She didn't have the agency within her business to bring in someone like you. So what she wants to know from you is, let's say I think you have an excellent offering. Who do I talk to? Or do you know how I get to the person who makes the decision to bring your product into my company. Excuse me for paraphrasing you. Did I get that right? Okay, I can answer the other part too. Absolutely. Um, so this is a great question because as I'm proposing this, I don't know exactly who the right person is. I'm going to assume HR, that would be kind of like the right person to have this discussion with, but that is also like not, there, there might be resistant to this conversation. And so I believe that this needs to both have a bottom up and a top down approach, whether as starting to work with a small group of employees in a test scenario where managers are seeing a problem and they want to bring me on, or whether I'm working directly with HR departments to uh, provide these services at scale. So that's really a learning opportunity for me in the future. Uh, where are we at? And any other questions? I do have a question. Yeah, so Huba. You, you mentioned that um, most of the low level, kind of like low paying jobs, you know, manual jobs are the ones that are going to be disrupted by technology. I disagree with you. Okay. I think it's going to be just like as ChatGPT is showing it, it's more of the clerk type of job that is going to be very much disrupted by that. What do you think about that? Did you have a question well, or just a disagreement? I, my question is, what do you think about that? Because it's two different types of work, right? And the rescaling is, has to be different. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So the clerk types of roles uh, technically are, tend to be and entry-level roles. So when we think of Bing roles or CSM roles, a lot of those entry-level roles have historically been reliant on writing emails, on this kinds of basic level documentation. And that is the kind of thing that ChatGPT is quickly making a matter of minutes rather than a matter of back and forth in days. And so I do see the differentiation there between you know, the drivers aren't necessarily the ones who are going 
Like, even though they're going to be um, losing their jobs the same way as a kind of cleric entry level role, um, the, both of those people are going to lose their opportunities. But I see these kinds of skills as learning AI and learning how to cooperate with technology being applicable to everyone because education should be widely acceptable or accessible. Does that answer your question, yeah. Huba? Thank you. Awesome. Uh, with that, I'm going to close out. Thank you guys so much for having me here today. Uh, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can pull out your phone and uh, take a picture of this QR code here and follow us in all of the places. Thanks again, and I uh, hope to chat with you soon.